think of a go faster Audi and no doubt it's a Quattro model that springs to mind. In fact, until its recent rebranding as Audi Sport the brand's high performance skunk works was called Quattro GmbH Fast Audi's a four-wheel drive, that's a fact well, not quite, because there's now the R8 RWS those three letters stand for rear wheel series, which means that, yes, this mid-engine sports car is rear-wheel drive this marks a radical departure for Audi you'll have to delve into the company's very earliest days in the 1920s and 30s to find a car that wasn't front or four-wheel drive so why now? Well, according to Audi Sport CEO Stefan Winkelmann the R8 RWS is for purist say limited edition model for customers with an appreciation for essential driving enjoyment so, people like you and me, then, not many of us, mind, because production is limited to just 999 examples spread between coupe and spider convertibles with prices starting at £110,000 so what do you get for your money? You get less weight for starters, with the emission of the four-wheel drive gubbins resulting in a claimed 50 kilograms saving over the standard model. You also get some natty Audi Sport badges in the places vacated by the old Quattro logos, plus the dashboard is garnished with a small one of 999 plaque. And, well, that's sort of it you'd need to be an arch Audi spotter to note the differences externally which run to some gloss black trim inserts those with the more exhibitionist streak can specify some red stripes that run over the bonnet, roof and tip of the tail but other than that the RWS is standard R8 this even runs to the engine and transmission which is the same combination of 533 bhp. 5.2 litre V10 and 7 speed twin clutch found in the entry level four wheel drive machine. The big news on the R8 is the deletion of the four wheel drive system. Essentially, this means the removal of the multiplate clutch center differential, the prop shaft, and front drive shafts, which results in a 50 kilograms, 40 kilograms on the Spider, saving in weight over the Quattro version. To compensate for this reduction, engineers have recalibrated the dampers, added a 10% stiffer front anti roll bar, remapped the stability control, and tweaked the electric power steering. It's hardly the hardcore mechanical makeover you'd expect of a car aimed at purists elsewhere. The car is identical to the standard model that means it's essentially hand-built at the brand's Bollinger Hof facility using plenty of aluminium and carbon fiber reinforced plastics in its strong and relatively light Audi space frame, ASF. Construction like the Quattro, the RWS gets an aerodynamically sculpted underfloor, while the suspension is by double wishbones all round our car was also fitted with the laser LED headlamps, which promise a main beam range of 600 meters which is twice that of the normal setup although in practice its light projection was no better than that of Porsche's standard LED units for the 911 mounted in the middle of the R8 RWS is the familiar naturally aspirated 5.2 liter V10 however, despite its brief as a driver's car, the RWS gets the lower powered version meaning a still healthy 533 bhp at 7800 revolutions per minute, and a heady 398 pounds foot of torque at 6500 revolutions per minute mated to the engine is Audi's 7-speed S-tronic twin clutch transmission that drives only the rear wheels through a limited slip differential while the RWS benefits from a decent weight saving over the Quattro reduced traction means it's actually two tenths slower from 0 to 62 miles per hour with a time of 3. 7 seconds still, with a 198 miles per hour top speed it's actually 1 mile per hour faster than its four-wheel drive sibling. So you win some you lose some ignore the numbers though because whichever way you cut it the RWS is still spectacularly fast the mid-engine layout means traction is strong, allowing the RWS to deploy its considerable performance potential at will yet it's the way the engine serves up this pace that's truly captivating. The V10 delivering the full operatic performance from growling idle all the way through to its spine-tingling yowling crescendo at 8,500 revolutions per minute this is one of the great internal combustion engines it's further enhanced by the transmission, which delivers seamless and rapid fire shifts on the way up the box, plus a delicious split of the throttle with every downshift it's also smooth and intuitive when left to its own devices if only the small, plastic key paddles could be replaced with something more befitting a blue-blooded super the car this is where the head scratching begins because despite messages being delivered by Audi Sport Top Brass, the RWS doesn't feel all that different to the standard car now that's no bad thing, 
because the balanced and agile R8 is the most driver-focused machine the brand builds but we expected more from a car aimed so squarely at enthusiasts and that makes such a big play of its rear-wheel drive underpinnings in fact, only with the combination of disabled stability control and aggressive throttle application will you learn the RWS's two-wheel drive, and then the transition from grip to slip comes so quickly aided by the pendulum effect of that giant engine that you'll need to be wide awake to gather it all up particularly on the road for the rest of the time its business as usual push hard into a corner and there's the faintest whiff of stabilizing understeer but the rest of the time the R8 is taut, composed and grippy, while over typically undulating and poorly surfaced British roads its excellent body control breeds confidence and while the steering is typically Audi in its limited feedback it is quick and precise, allowing you to place the RWS with confidence the only real but there is the braking system, which lacks the precision and progression of the best setups really get into a groove with the RWS and there are moments when you can exploit the rear wheel drive chassis to drive you out to the corner, the tail gently rotating round to straighten your exit but these situations are both rare and, because you have to push the car very hard to get to this stage it's accompanied by a nervy sense that the R8 is a big car to gather up yet perhaps the biggest conundrum is that the Quattro model wasn't exactly a killjoy in its approach it's trick four wheel drive transmission giving you enough leeway to edge the tail out while always having the option to shuffle torque forward to stabilize any waywardness more importantly the great attraction means you can deploy all its performance when conditions turn nasty in the RWS you go from confidence inspiring to nerve wracking in the blink of an eye at 112,450 pounds the RWS is now the entry point to R8 ownership, albeit for as long as it takes to shift 999 examples yet while a £13,680 saving over the Quattro makes the RWS look like good value in isolation, it's less impressive in the context of the £113,857 Porsche 911 GT3 here is a car that's been tailored for the enthusiast and delivers on every single level where the Audi is a little mute in its communication with the person behind the wheel the Porsche offers full sensory overload its glorious sparking 4 litre flat 6 also comes close to matching the Oral thrills of the Audi's scintillating V10. Ultimately, the 911's brilliance lies in its ability to make every journey an event to be savored. The RWS, on the other hand, just feels like the already excellent R8 but without that car's all weather security.